So you want to know how to cut large cardstock projects with your Cricut. And I'm talking the 12 by 24 type cardstock and using your long Cricut mat or your 12 by 24 Cricut mat. That's exactly what we're going to do today. And I'm also going to show you how to very easily modify an existing design to fit on the 12 by 24 mats. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So what we're going to need for this video is our 12 by 24 cardstock and our 12 by 24 mats. Now we also need a way to score the materials. So that's going to be our scoring stylus. But if you have the Cricut Maker or the Maker 3, you can make use of the scoring wheel on the quick swap housing if you have it. These 12 by 24 inch cardstock packs are very new to me as I've only just recently discovered them. So those of you in the US who have had Cricut for a while, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But for my South African audience, they're around 270 Rand. Now there's only one retailer in South Africa that I've seen that actually has them loaded on their store and that is SA Sublimation Blanks. So I'm going to leave a link down to the product below and in the country as far as I know we currently only have the primary sampler and the sorbet sampler. I'm sure they'll add more so if you're watching this video in the future there might be more available. For those of you in the US, if you're not quite sure where to get them, you'll be able to get them from Amazon and they're around $17.50. And I will leave a link to both of the products down in the description. So let's get started on setting everything up in Design Space. This is what Cricut Design Space looks like on your homepage. So I'm just going to search for baseball cap. Those are the keywords that you need to use when searching for this project. But you can apply the same method to any cardstock project that you're working with because I'm going to show you exactly how to manipulate any project to work on the 12 by 24 mats. So we scroll down a little bit to get to the project that we want. And this is the project that we're going to be using today. So I'm going to click on it. In order for this method to work, if you're using something from Cricut Access, you're going to need to be able to customize the design, which is in the bottom right-hand corner. If you can't customize the design, then you won't be able to change the sizing of it, so this method won't work. But if you import your own design into Cricut Design Space, then you'll be able to just add that to the canvas and you won't need this step. So let's go customize and wait for everything to import port onto the canvas. So I'm going to zoom out so that I can see everything. And with this project, we can see that everything is grouped together. It's all one element. So I'm going to right click and ungroup the project just so that I can work with the different elements separately and keep them all a little bit more on the canvas as a landscape as opposed to having everything portrait. So I'm just going to move this up to the side here and I'm going to highlight all of those and move those up Then I can zoom in a little bit more. In order to make this project work for the 12 by 24 inch mats, we need to make sure that the largest element will fit within the constraints of our mat. So that means that one of the dimensions can be larger than 29.2 centimeters, but not both of them. So this is the biggest element that we have in this design, and it is 19 centimeters long and 14 centimeters high. So that means that the 14 centimeter section is the one that we need to make sure does not exceed 29.2, because we can have it longer than that, but we can't have it longer and wider. I just want to add in that it's important to remember to size everything together because this is a project that all the different parts fit together. If we change one item, we make that one bigger, then the rest of the items won't fit properly. So the panels are the correct size for each other and they fit onto the rest of the parts. So if you make the base of the hat a little bit bigger, then you'll see the parts overlapping on the sides. So it's important to remember to size everything at the same time. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to highlight everything. Now, it's important to remember not to group yet at this stage, and we're just going to drag it out a little bit. And you can zoom out a little bit, so we've got a little bit more wiggle room. And then I deselect everything, and I click on the largest part, to see if that has gone past 29.2. It hasn't, we're quite far away still. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. You can just continue this process to, you know, zoom out and, you know, make enlarge it and make it bigger. Or you can use the grid to help you. If we look at the grid of Cricut Design Space, each of these blocks is 10 centimeters. We can see, because that one is 100. It says here, it says 100 and there are 10 blocks in between 0 and 100. So that means if we're working with 29.2 centimeters, three of those blocks are 30 centimeters. So instead of selecting everything 
draw, dragging it out, selecting everything, dragging it out, we can actually just make sure that it's just within three of those little blocks. So, work smart. <laughs> so we're going to select everything, drag it. I'm going to move it across a little bit so that I'm working with that side and I'm going to make it bigger. What I'm looking at is this block here, only that block, and we can see that it's covering three of the blocks, but it's not close to the edges yet because 29.2 is very close to the edges, so I want to get it as close as possible. So I'm going to zoom out once again a little bit more and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So now we've gone past three blocks because here's one block, here's the second block and there's the third block. We can see that it's that corner of the hat is just touch, well, just above the line but that one's gone past it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scroll down a little bit and make it a little bit smaller and now we can see that it's fitting inside those two lines. So if I click away it's 28.5 centimeters. Alright, so now I'm going to click on the layer panel and select all of them. It's another way of selecting all the layers, you don't have to click drag. And I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger. And we can use that as our way to gauge whether it's big enough. So that's 28.9, it's close enough to 29.2, it's 3 millimeters away. I'm okay with that and I'm going to get started on the next step. So now that we have the correct sizing that we want, we're going to make sure that it's going to fit on the 12 by 20 formats. If we have to just click make it at this stage, you'll not really have very optimized space and it will want to cut a lot of the things on your 12 by 12 mat. And in all honesty, it's just a little bit of a waste. So what I like to do is to try and pre-optimize and pre-lay out my designs. And this is a method you can use for pretty much anything in Cricut Design Space that you're cutting. And I much prefer it to letting the software optimize my designs, because let's face it, they don't do a very good job. So I'm going to add in a shape, and I'm just gonna add in a normal square. Once that square has been added, I'm going to change the dimensions. So you can do that either by clicking the little lock button on the bottom left and dragging it to the size that you want. Or at the top, you can click and you can type the sizing that you're wanting. So because I'm wanting very specific sizes, I'm going to rather use the numbers at the top because it's going to be a bit of a pain to get it there. So the width of this one is going to be 59.5. Six. Now you can go slightly longer than that because it's actually 59.69 by 29.2 centimeters, but shh, don't tell anyone. And then we're going to press enter and then the height is going to be 29.2. Now we have the size of the cutting area on our 12 by 20 format. So we're going to use this as a gauge to make sure that we're optimizing our media effectively and not using six pieces of cardstock when we could have actually used four. So now I'm going to right click and duplicate and I'm going to do that two more times because I want to see if we can fit this onto four pieces of cardstock. I'm going to select all of them by holding in the shift key on my keyboard and clicking them individually right clicking and sending them to the back because I want to layer everything on top of the designs just to see that they actually fit. You can move some of them off to the side for now as we're going to be working with them one by one. So we're going to start with the main piece. Now the main piece there we can see fits very nicely. If you wanted to get really technical with the lineup, which in this case, honestly, we don't really need to. And as long as we've got the general idea, if we're going to be wasting a millimeter or two of cardstock, that's okay. But what you can do here is to click, drag, and select the two layers. Use the align feature to align them to the right or to align them to the top, just to make sure that you're actually touching those corners. But like I said, it's going to be a few millimeters worth of difference, so it's really not the end of the world. Then I'm going to see what else works on this mat. Now I could very easily fit that on the mat and then I won't be able to fit anything else. That should be fine. It's not a train smash at all. So what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to group 
those. It's very important to not attach them, rather just group them. And then I'm just going to move it off to the side for now so that I don't have to worry about it. Next, we're going to then bring up another box and start playing around with that. And a lot of this process will be trial and error, figuring out what works and what doesn't. So the method that you use for this specific template, if you apply the same logic, it'll work for any design. So as long as you have the box of the size of your mat and you're moving things and trying to orient them correctly, zooming in to make sure that they're not overlapping, because I've done that a few times, and just playing around with the actual sizing. So we're going to put two of those there, and that one I'm going to turn around, play around with the orientation a little bit more, so we can fit four of those on one mat. And then, like I said, we're going to zoom in, so I'm just pressing Control on my keyboard, and I'm zooming in, scrolling in with the mouse, and we can then move those up a little bit, move that across. And like I said, if it's a couple of millimeters apart, a little bit, a couple of millimeters longer than that, it's really not a train smash. We don't have to be so extremely precise here. I'm happy with that amount of things on the mat. You can even move these onto the mat if you want to and cut them maybe in some of the dead space over here, just to try and make use of that dead space a lot. And then we're going to highlight everything and we're going to group it for now and just move it off to the side as well. The next mat, we're going to work with these two because I think these two will fit nicely. And then let's try this hexagon. I think. don't think we'll be able to get one of those on the mat. So those will likely need to go onto their own mat. So I'm just going to use that last square and I'm just going to move these closer to each other and we can see there that they fit onto their own mat. Now what I want to do is, I don't need to group these because I'm not going to move them, but what I want to do is to hide all of the gray blocks. So the gray blocks are the shapes that we added in. So I'm going to the right hand side on the panel and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where you see the blocks. Now I can just click on the block and delete it if I want to, but I might want to use them again at a later stage. So I'm actually going to just click on the little eye because that hides the block. So we don't need to worry about deleting it. We can just hide it from view. And then we're going to scroll up to the top a little bit more because we've now grouped the other ones. So we need to scroll up and find the, the square. Well, it's a rectangle, but they call it a square. <laughs> and then we hide the last one. So now we have our groups. All right. Now, if we had to send this to the Make It panel, it would reorganize everything because we haven't attached anything. So I'm going to select this group, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to attach. Now that makes sure that everything in its current orientation will be exactly like that in the cutting mat. So I'm going to do the same here. We didn't group this one, so I'm just going to click, drag just over the items to select them, right click and attach. And this one, I'm actually going to move it up a little bit just so we use up a little bit less space. And I'm going to click drag and attach. And then the last one, we're going to click on that one and we're going to go attach. So now we have successfully made it into four different shapes and we've used up the most amount of space that we can for this project. And from here on, it's just a straight shoot to cutting everything and assembling the hat. So when we click make it, it's detected that our project is quite a big one and that we need to use a 12 by 20 format. So it's saying at least one of your images is larger than 11.5 inches, so 29.2 centimeters in height or in width. Select OK to continue with a larger mat or cancel to return to the canvas to reduce the size. We don't want to reduce the size. We are OK with that, so we're going to click OK. And then you'll see on the side panel, we have only four mats and that we're going to cut. So what we can do now is we can open up our cardstock pack, choose a color, start loading them into the machine to use the score, pen and cut functions. As it says here, we've got score lines, we've got pen lines, and we've got basic cut. And we are using the most out of our cardstock, which is very exciting. And we're gonna have a super big hat. <laughs> Next, we're going to make sure that we're going to choose the correct material. So we're going to connect to our machine 
and then select our material. Now that our machine is connected, we're going to use the most accurate representation of the material. Because we're working with a cardstock, I'm pretty sure it's around a 200 GSM cardstock or a medium cardstock. I'm going to go to popular and I'm going to choose the medium cardstock setting. Now you'll need to make sure to line up the material that you're cutting with the material that you're selecting so that you're gonna get the cuts that you want. And I'm going to leave the pressure on default and if you're using a maker, it'll show you to load the single scoring wheel. But if you want to use your scoring stylus, you can just click on edit tools and click on the stylus instead and then click apply. But I'm going to leave it to the scoring wheel and then I'm going to prep everything, cut everything, and then we will rejoin each other for assembly. Another super important thing to remember about cutting with a 12 by 12 mat is to have enough space behind the machine for the entire cutting mat. So what I like to do is to feed the mat underneath the machine and see if I need to move the machine a little bit more forward. So I think we should be good with this section and now I know that it fits both in front and behind the machine. So we can load up and get going. And if you are using the scoring stylus, you want to open up the clamp, load it in, hear a click, and then close it. But because we're not going to be using the scoring stylus, I'm going to be loading in my black pen. So I'm gonna open up the pen, load it in, hear a click, and close the clamp. And we can even put the lid on top. And now it's done with the writing and the scoring, so we need to change the blade to the fine point blade. Everything has been cut and we are all ready for assembly. Now we just need to figure out which parts are going to be the base and which parts are going to be the top of the this particular design. So we have all of these, these are definitely going to be the top as they fold over and those little tabs fold in and stick in on those sides like that. And I would imagine that everything else then goes onto the base. So this would then stick on here and these parts then stick onto each other. They are the same width as that. And then they stick on to the base. So we're gonna start off with these pieces and we're gonna put these pieces all to the side as we don't need them yet. This we're gonna use last and these we're gonna do separately as well. And these we're going to stick together they're gonna form a nice curl on the inside, so let's get started with those. Now we are gonna be sticking these on the inside so that they look nice on the outside. And we're gonna make sure to line up this part with the seam over there. So that folds there nicely. So what I do is I place them on first and then I curve it. We now have our base part. We can fold these flaps in. And then this one we stick to the larger base plate so it'll sit like that. So we have our super extra large hat that will dry. And we can now place that on the front of it. And this part then just gets glued on top of that to hide all the ugly marks. Now we have the base of our hat, and as we can see, it is actually quite sturdy, which is fantastic. Now, on to the tricky part. I'm gonna do these one by one, because they are quite challenging, and we don't want to overcommit. So, I'm gonna fold all the flaps first, and then I'm going to be gluing each of the little flaps down with some glue, and slowly lining them up with their counterparts. And we just continue with that with all of the pieces. It takes a while, but uh, I guess it's worth it. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. So we have the little top part that we're going to stick on now. Glue that sucker on there. And then all of these little round thingies are for these holes. So we're gonna stick them on the edge of the holes. All done. Look at how cute that looks. And it is by no means perfect. There are lots of imperfections, but you know what? That is part of the craft. So we're going to pick it up, bring over our box. This part is obviously the part of the strap it goes at the back. How perfect is that? This hat is giganticus. Look at it. I love being able to make gigantic crafts with my Cricut. Like I said, it's not perfect. There's lots of imperfections on there, but we love it. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more fun crafts in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.